Welcome to our concert, and thank you for coming this afternoon. Eine kleine Nachmittag Musik. Of course, the proper title is Eine kleine Nachmusik, but this concert's in the afternoon, thus the title change. Originally scored for a string quintet, including double bass, it is, however, often performed by string orchestras. This serenade is one of Mozart's most famous works. It was completed in Vienna on August 10, 1787, around the time Mozart was working on the second act of his opera, Don Giovanni. Apologies to Mozart for our changing the title to Nachmittag afternoon and for only playing the first movement of this delightful four movement work.
I want to tempt the German. If Thou But Suffer, God to Guide Thee is a 1641 hymn, both tune and lyrics, by Georg Neumann. I was drawn to the first and seventh verses of this hymn. They are, if thou suffer God to guide, if thou but suffer God to guide thee, and hope in him through all thy ways, he'll give thee strength whate'er betide thee, and bear thee through the evil days. Who trusts in God's unchanging love builds on the rock that naught can move. Sing, pray, and keep his ways unswerving. So do thine own part faithfully, and trust his word, though undeserving. Thou yet shall find it true for thee, God never yet forsook at need, the soul that trusted him indeed. Bach based his chorale preludes using Neumach's hymn. I will begin with the hymn, then play the three preludes Bach composed, the first two using only the manual keyboards, and our brand new antiphonal speakers, and the final prelude with full organ and pedals. A special note for St. Luke's folks, the organ is set for a sampled German organ, one which would have sounded similar during Bach's time.
isn't this a grand organ? It was, it was given uh, by your generosity. We got it Easter week last year. So it's, this is its inaugural concert. Yay. And the umbilical cord worked. <laughs> this famous and truly grand waltz you're about to hear was composed by Chopin in 1833 and published the next year. Chopin dedicated it to his pupil, Laura Horsford. This was his first published waltz composition for solo piano. Although prior he had written at least 16 waltzes that were either destroyed or eventually published posthumously. In 1909, Russian composer Igor Stravinsky made an orchestral arrangement of this waltz for the ballet Les Sifidel. Please welcome Elizabeth McDougall.
I was asked to compose a piece for the West Michigan Flute Association Flute Choir soon after moving to Colorado Springs in late 2019. They needed the piece quickly in February of 2020, so after the new year I got in the zone and wrote Mountain Grandeur for Flute Choir within a couple of weeks. Later that year, I scored it for piano. Inspired by the beauty and majesty of Colorado Springs Pikes Peak Mountain, I chose this 14er, as she's also known, as my muse. Both literally and figuratively, the 14,115 foot elevation of that mountaintop and her stunning size takes my breath away. The gentle and airy chords in the beginning of this piece suggest just that. Take note of the interval of a 14th, you know, as in the 14er, used in the beginning and ending. I'll demonstrate it in just a bit. The rolling broken chords of the left hand suggest the start of storms, wind howling from the mountain, followed by snow in the winter or monsoonal rains in the summer. The storms erupt with rhythmic motifs and fortes. The change of key midway gives way to the calmer springtime days. And if you listen closely, you'll hear a phrase from our beloved America the Beautiful, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain, from which this very mountain peak was the inspiration for that poem by local resident Catherine Lee Bates. What must go up must come down, and thus the ending descends the hill with inverted intervals once again using the 14th. I hope you get a chance to visit the peak as I did with a friend last May. The newly, beautifully refurbished Cog Railway train was slow and relaxing, and the view from the top on a clear day, simply spectacular.
you're going to hear the world premiere of Sonata for Unusual Times. You might ask why me, the composer, isn't playing this today. Way too hard. <laughs> and it was Elizabeth who asked me to write this for her, so it's hers to play. We all experienced the global pandemic, everyone, everywhere. I found that a most fascinating thought, especially the thought that while we all went through it together, we all experienced it differently. It was this dichotomy that fueled the first movement, that and seeing crazy people hoarding toilet paper as if that was the most important thing at the moment. That made me angry, exasperated, and inspired the title, Panic and the COVID Crazies, to the first movement. Specific motifs began to emerge quite by accident. My non-musician cousin, Nori, who's here today, uh, got me started. I'm reading the wrong notes. Hello. OK. Um, pardon me. I'll start again. Specific motifs began to merge quite by accident. My non-musician cousin helped me get started by playing the first three random notes in the bass on my piano at home. <laughs> Sounded ominous, kind of like, what's going on? That's how I felt when it first happened. First three notes done. Thank you, Nori. And with Elizabeth's permission, I'm going to play a few other notes before the performance. The disjointed bass line after the ominous intro by happenstance were the notes C, D, C. As in Centers for Disease Control. That wasn't planned, it just happened. So given that, um, the uh, second theme, by uh, resembling the Calvary to the rescue and tonally centered in the key of F, I dubbed the Fauci theme. Elizabeth requested Sonata Allegro form, and this movement is just that, theme A, theme B, and subdominant, then repeated, followed by development of those two themes in multiple key centers. And recapitulating back to the tonic key, yes, C for COVID. Might as well have some fun while composing such a serious, dissonant, and emotionally gripping piece. Loss says it all, but there are a few important notes in this movement that to this day still disturb me. As was a beginning custom around the world, folks at a given time in their own neighborhoods would show their support for the medical workers by banging on pots and pans, shouting out, or as in Denver, giving at the eight o'clock howl. So one night, given that my niece-in-law, who was a new mother with an infant at home, was now in surgery, operating on COVID patients, she's an anesthesiologist right on their head, I took my Scotty McKellar outside at 8 p.m. to howl. Mac didn't make a peep, but I gave it the old college try, and my neighbor directly across the street from me, who heard, replied, they're just a bunch of hypochondriacs. To which, completely stunned by his lack of compassion, I just simply went back inside, never to howl again. <laughs> the crashing dissonant chord in this piece of loss expresses exactly how I felt and still feel to this day by his comment. Enough said. Except when I was composing loss, Mac howled from inside. God bless him, he sings. The motive of lifting upwards in the beginning is my howl an expression of love for not only my niece, but for everyone who went through hell trying to save lives and comfort families who couldn't be with their loved ones in their moments of death. The death toll bell I composed at the lowest note of the piano, A. You'll hear that. Is played five times within the body of the piece itself, then repeated at the end and the A and throughout the whole piece symbolizes 500,000 deaths worldwide lost to COVID. Today you'll hear a total of 14 for the 6.86 million, rounded up to seven, lives lost to COVID to date. I sobbed bitterly one day when I finished this and played it through. Death is not caused by hypochondria. A new novel respiratory virus, which we knew next to nothing about, hit us and hit us hard. Simple as that. Hope. 
There was a collective hope in the air as vaccines were helping curb serious illness and death. People once out of work were getting back to work, myself included, both of us. Desperate to get out and about, but safely still, I bought a year's pass to our Colorado State Parks, and boy, was that fun. I wrote most of this piece in Cheyenne Mueller State Parks on picnic benches, and even stayed in the beautiful towns of Dillon and Woodland Park. I finished it while visiting my cousins in the Albuquerque area and staying in my cousin's remarkably fancy RV. Elizabeth requested this movement in rondo form. That's A-B-A-C-A. -A -A. The joyfulness and happy music of this section A truly reflected my little trips and how lovely it felt getting out. There's a prayer of thanksgiving in the B section, and the C, while still giddy with excitement, has twinges of dissonance reminding me it's not over yet. I demonstrated to a piano student, um, she was asking about some pedaling. And I, four of my piano students from California came back to me on Zoom. So Sine and I were having a Zoom lesson and I demonstrated to her uh, a sostenuto pedal and I just made up this little ditty, this tune that was happy and cheerful. That became the first movement of hope. Uh, with keyboard, keyboard under arm and doggy at my side, great memories were made finishing this work. Here is Sonata for Unusual Times.
This last piece is our, uh, the concertino that the Ukiah Symphony asked me to write. Well, she actually got it started, but she lives in Ukiah, Northern California, and she played it years ago with the Ukiah Symphony Orchestra.
thank you to St. Luke's for hosting this event here, and I appreciate the, the use of the room and, and many of you sweet workers that have made this, uh, the organ getting moved, the piano getting moved, chairs set up. Dwayne is our sound technician who did an excellent job and has heard this now twice. <laughs> thank you. And for, especially, I don't know if they can hear it in the other room, but Tony and Barb Lane have really helped uh, Tony under doing the instrument mo removals and Barb helping in the reception, along with many ladies who brought some lovely desserts. Um, there is a reception following immediately, and I just really want to say thank you again. Let's give a hand out to Elizabeth who <laughs> came. We had the lion's share of this recital. So thank you all. Thank you very much. Let's go enjoy ourselves in the hall. <laughs>